Thanks for choosing this free Anfield Index podcast. If you'd prefer to listen to this or any of our other shows without adverts, then now's the time to check out Anfield Index Pro. With AI Pro, you can supercharge your entire listening experience. You'll not only get all of our podcasts without the ads, but you'll have them far faster with our quick publish feature available exclusively for subscribers. AI Pro also puts you in the heart of our sound studio with an option to listen to many of our shows live and interact with the podcasters in real time as the shows are recording. Upgrading couldn't be easier. AI Pro is available on all popular podcast platforms and we have our own apps for Apple and Android. Just head on over to AnfieldIndexPro.com and get started today. Hey guys, welcome back to the last Nina Casa show of this half of the season. And uh, what a way to sign off, eh? 3 1 to the Reds against Southampton. I think it was to be expected. Um, some strange things happened. Of course, you know, Klopp not being at, you know, in the dugout, which felt very, very strange. But the Reds were in cruise control. 3 1, it finished. And joining me on this podcast, I feel like, you know, I'm going to have a breeze with these two cool, calm customers. I love working with them. Let me introduce my panel. First up, you know what? Give her props because through an injury, a vocal injury, I might add, she still managed to make it on this pod. A familiar voice on Anfield Index and the Anfield Index main podcast. It's Lisa Marie. Well, woman, I don't know what to say of you, um, uh, you know, showing us up. Um, uh, we, if anything's ever wrong with us now in terms of like having a chest infection, we've got to step up and do podcasts. The standard has been set. I just wanted to, to determine whether or not I was a jinx as the last two times I was on the show, we lost. So it, it looks as though the, um, the uh, bad luck has been removed. Um, so, yeah, but no, happy to be here. Happy to talk about a win um, as we go off into the World Cup sunset. Um, uh, Lisa, if it was uh, two losses, um, so my, my memory's a little bit everywhere. Um, uh, Nottingham Forest and Leeds. Forest and Leeds, yes. Yes, well, you know what? You, well, you know what? Uh, I'm not a superstitious person, but you broke that because obviously we won here and we beat a relegation um, uh, yes. for the kind of team. <laughs> so two things you've, you've put to bed there. So nice work, Lisa. And joining Lisa on this podcast, it's um, a familiar voice on Anfield Index. Love working with him. Um, he once said Wilfred Borney in the most northern accent ever. We, um, it is. <laughs> I'm never going to move past that. We oh my God, move. you put me to shit. Never, never. <laughs> it's Kay, Kay Long Kareem. Oh. Welcome to the show. Oh, thank you, Nancy. It's always lovely to be on, especially after a nice, uh, as close to regulation as it comes when, I think. Well, I say that there's still something to talk about in this game, but yeah, I mean it's it was it was a good win. It was a good win, and you know what, guys? Um, everyone who's joining us live on discount, um, discount. What the hell is wrong with me? <laughs> the curse I... of Wilfred Bonnet strikes. <laughs> <laughs> I am everywhere today, but um, guys, thank you for joining us on Discord. If anyone wants to call in, feel free to do so. Our regular caller, Kieran, will not be making it, so I'll just give him a special shout out anyway for being awesome, and all of you guys just in general who join us on the on the podcast live. So, guys, let's get into this. Of course, you know Southampton. Lisa, I'll start with you. You know Southampton. Um, uh, I had a new manager bounce. You know, second Hassan Hotel bringing in um, Nathan Jones. Um, we come in, what did you make of us and what did you make of our lineup? Because obviously, you know, there was a bit of a, a, a change, you know, um, and Gomez coming in, um, uh, you know, Trent, Gomez, Van Dyke, Robertson, Elliot, Fabino, Thiago, and the front three was pretty much to be expected in my opinion. But what did you make of the starting lineup? You know, honestly, Nina, it was, it was pretty much what I expected. The only, hmm. I guess, one that raised it eyebrow for me in for Kanate um so and I mean it didn't it just gave me a little bit of pause it didn't so much yes. shock me per se mm. but it just was kind of like oh that's okay um so yeah it was it was what I expected I expected us to go strong um I you know because I knew we'd you know we we wanted the win we needed the win um so the lineup 
quite honestly, was was pretty much what I expected it to be. Yeah, same here. I, I, I was exactly the same with um, uh, with Gomez's reaction there. I was just like, oh, okay, I thought it'd be Konate, but I looked at the bench and I thought that Konate was even on the bench, so maybe no, it's just, he wasn't, you know, and that was honestly, yeah. you're right. I noticed that as well. I was like, well, maybe, you know, and then I noticed Konate isn't even on the bench, so I don't know if he's picked up a little bit of a knock or I, I didn't hear. I don't know if anybody else did, but I didn't necessarily hear what, the reason as to why he was left out. Feel free to, um, uh, you know, um, uh, fill us in if we're missing something there, guys. And, Kay, I'm going to come to you. want to get your thoughts on the lineup. What did you make of it? Pretty much the same as you guys. It was, you know, uh, nothing really jumped out at me in terms of I'm not very happy with that. I, I was pretty, uh, pretty content with the lineup going into it. Uh, for a side like, well, let me say for a side in Southampton's form, uh, having just lost their manager, I know new manager bounce and all that, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But I thought, looking at that for this assignment, that was a that was a good enough, uh, uh, certainly more than enough to to handle a side like that. Yeah, Ninza was pretty happy. No complaints at all. Yeah, same here, guys. And um, obvi- obviously, this game was not live. Um, it's a three o'clock kickoff, so you know we I had the luxury of the stream. Um, obviously, I think later on in the evening, um, I certainly found out that you know, um, Klopp has got a ban, which was a bit petty by the FA. But okay, you won. Enjoy that, you know. Um, I'll tell you what gave me a little bit of anxiety, though. Maybe this is my OCD behaviour, but the fact that he was sat there and it looked like he was struggling with his mic. And it was like he was struggling. And I was like, why did you not fix this last night? I am that kind of person. Like, how are you going to communicate to the bench? But that was just my OCD coming out right there, people. You know, I, how are you going to communicate to Pep Linders? But that was my little side note on that situation. I mean, guys, what did you make of the club banning? Just quickly before we move on to the game. Um, Kay, I'll come to you first. Yeah, it was weird. It was. I wasn't mm. expecting it. I, I was kind mm. of out of it. My, um, we were at the airport most of today, seeing off my sister who was going off on a really amazing work assignment. So I kind of wasn't in, you know, the the news rounds and stuff like that. So it was totally a surprise to me. Having seen it, uh, you know, it, it it was fine. It seemed like the communication was okay. There was that one. There was that one part. I don't know if you guys saw where. Klopp was shouting something. He was covering his mouth and shouting something into the mic. And one lad down below, his old old guy, he just turned around with such a fervor, like, oh my God, <laughs> he wasn't expecting that. So I think Klopp raised a few heckles out there on the, uh, you know, in, in the bleachers. But um, yeah, it didn't seem to affect much. I, I, I wonder how the dynamic between Klopp and Linders plays in that respect. I know Linders has very much his own way of doing things uh, and, and, you know, wants to implement some new ideas. So I wonder how they would have sort of, uh, you know, eased those through in terms of Klopp going and saying to Linders, okay, you know, I'm in the stands you take a lead on this, 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 and this, and you do this, 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 and this, or was it, you know, purely a Klopp thing? But it didn't seem to make that much a difference on the pitch, to be honest. No, it didn't. And the fact that you mentioned that Klopp yelling into a microphone, I'm not being funny, he's giving proper South Asian mum vibes uh, when they, um, uh, back in the day, they'd call their family um, uh, overseas. Yeah. Um, they still do it, and I'm like, dude, you're on FaceTime now, it's the internet, you don't need to scream anymore. But I'm just going to put that out there. I mean, Lisa, what did you make of Jürgen Klopp's ban? Um, you know, when I saw that, you know, whoever it was had had filed a, you know, I guess they didn't they didn't feel that the fine that he received was enough. I honestly expected it. I mean, it didn't surprise me when I saw it last night or actually it was afternoon for me, but I I expected it. I thought, yep, that's that's just the petty world in which we live. So it it didn't really surprise me and you know what? I get it done. Get it over with all the more reason we can just start the second half of the season without that sort of outstanding business, you know, hanging out overhead. So but I, it was, and I mean, was was Pep Lenders the one getting the microphone feed, or was it somebody, one of the other assistant coaches? I just wondered. I would like a transcript of that because it was probably pretty amusing. That, that, that guy who was up there with Klopp just looked like he was having the worst time. Who was, you know, up, up there in the stadium, <laughs> there, sitting there. Yeah. And and he, and and the, I mean, forgive me, I, I I'm not trying to judge anybody, but the dude had like these big ears, and it, and it looked like he was just getting worn out by what was going on between. <laughs> well, and I mean, I I don't know about the coverage you all were watching, but 
I saw more of Klopp up there in the stands than I saw of Lenders on the sideline, which I thought was kind of funny. Yeah. Yeah, same here. Same here. Yeah, same here. Right, guys, so let's get into this. And uh, Lisa, I'm going to come to you because um, what did you make of the Red Star? I mean, it did not take them long to find the back of the net. Um, Roberto Firmino, I mean, I just loved um, the, um, you know, the... The the slow motion flick of a header on the edge of the box, on the edge of the area. It it was beautiful. And it kind of bounced just before it beat the keeper. But yeah, we started off good is what I'm trying to get at. Five minutes in, the right response. We did. We did start off well, although I, I am going to confess that I think I spent the first maybe two to three minutes of the match being just slightly unsettled about the lack of beard under it was it was kind of freaking me out a little bit but yes um, yes yes <laughs> these are the things we're here to talk about people um so yeah I, I felt a little unsettled but you know okay but no it was I mean that was my overwhelming um I guess emotion when you know when we scored that was like yes okay we scored the first goal it's going to be a good day um unfortunately that feeling didn't last for very long but for what the three minutes or so I had it it was nice I enjoyed it yeah, we will talk about Alison Specker beard um, uh, later because it threw me off as well. Like, it really did. But, Kay, what did you make of that goal? I mean, Salah initially gets fouled. Um, I just thought, um, you know, a really, really nice goal by Bobby um, uh, to kick things off. And uh, also, I actually thought um, him being not included in the Brazil squad maybe set a bit of fire under him because I actually thought he had a quite a good game. Yes, I agree. Oh, I I, it, that yeah. was my thought too. I'm sorry. No, 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 no. Please have a discussion <laughs> about it. This is what we're here for. Yeah. No, I um, I, no, that was the that was another thought that crossed my head. I thought, yeah, that was very much. A, yeah, we'll show you Brazil. Um, so which is great. I'm all for stuff like that. Absolutely, absolutely. And Kay, what did you make of that? Because I felt like time stood still when he headed that ball and the way it just bounced. I don't know. To me, they're always special goals when they feel very, very slow motion esque. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, a hundred percent. I thought there were a couple of things with the goal. There were there were two things to to kind of talk about. I think one in the context of Southampton also starting really fast, and I think it became obvious as the game went on that Southampton put a lot of eggs in the basket of starting quickly. Yes, and uh, that, so that was you know they did that pretty well. I thought. I think there is still a slight vulnerability with Liverpool when it comes to being pressed. I, I think they're. You know, we, we don't handle it as well as we used to. We don't play with, with as, you know, okay, let me not use words that uh, that can get me into trouble. But, um, yeah, I, 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 do, I do think we can get pressed and we can get pressured and, and the ball can get turned over. And in the context of that entire fast start, it was really, really good that Liverpool scored that first goal. I mean, besides the whole, we, you know, we concede the first goal kind of uh, trend that we seem to be exploring this season. That was within the context of Southampton's fast start. For us to get that fast start and nudge one over on them was was just wonderful and set such an amazing trend. To talk about the goal itself, though, uh, my first time watching it, I thought, "Oh, I wonder if the keepers had a bit of a a, a, a mare there." You know, it, it's it's kind of one of those when you're looking and saying, "It shouldn't, in theory, go in." You know, and let me break it down and look at it in slow motion and see exactly where the keeper made a mistake. But I, I know the keeper moved one way and then Bobby essentially hit it the other. But I don't know if you can plan for that as a keeper. I think he, it would be wonderful to have like Matias or Shri on, you know, one of the goalkeeping guys on. But I'm, I'm pretty sure he had to guard that near post because that is what you'd expect <laughs> someone to do. You'd expect them to head it that way. That would be the most power that you generate through the header. And instead, Bobby does the maddest thing. And you just like flicks it behind, basically. And suddenly the keepers, you know, the uh, freeze frame. This was the moment I knew I messed up, you know, kind of thing. Yeah, <laughs> I have to of... agree with you there. As much as we have to praise Bobby, like the keeper felt like he was very stagnant. Like it was almost like he was planted on his line. Like he didn't move. And yeah, I, I'm with you. He could have covered better. I look back and I, I will agree with you on that. Yeah, so I think there was an element of that, but I don't think you get that without Bobby doing a madness. Um, and, and it's a bit crazy that Bobby is this player that's just so 
associated with these amazing moments. To be able to continually outthink your opponent is something absolutely special. To do it across an entire career while you're one of the most you know, defensive forwards on the planet is absolutely outstanding. Um, and these are the moments we're going to remember Bobby for. You know, just watching that ball, like you said, Nins, bounce over the line. And you know, to get that start in such an amazing way, it really did set us up for the whole game. And even when Southampton scored the goal, I think we had a bit more about us to say, at least for the first half and the start of the second, so, you know, it, it carried us through that to say like, okay, well, we can now take a step back and analyze where we are in the game. You know, it gives you that flexibility. It gives you that little bit of calm. It gives you the moment um, just to have in your back pocket. So it was absolutely, you know, more. I wanted more. <laughs> I want more Bobby. Um, he's having such a good season. What What is that? Is it like his seventh goal or something or eighth goal or something like that? Uh, so nine far. was what my stream was telling me. I mean, I will have to check the stats. And if anyone already has them, feel free to correct me. But that's what I got. But mm. ridiculous amount considering he's on a mad goal drought. And like, like we've all said, I thought I thought he was um, he was um, really, really involved in so much. And Kay, I'm going to stick with you because... Um, you, you're right, um, because we started off good, but they they came out with um, a bit of intensity and obviously new manager, you know, tails up, you know, mm. um, much to play for. And of course, um, uh, as Lisa alluded to, our lead lasted all uh, of three minutes. And again, you know, a free kick for them. I think it's James Ward-Prowse who puts the delivery in. We kind of do like that whole high line thing. And um, Che Adams just kind of leaps over and beats Alison Becker and they get a goal. Um, are you that person who has everything? The coolest merch and those must-have fan threads? Well, over at our Anfield Index shop, we've gone that extra mile when it comes to pimping up your Liverpool collection. From our popular range of bespoke design t-shirts, sweaters, hoodies and hats, to our signature edition mugs, prints and coasters, all provided with fast worldwide shipping. We have something for every red. We also stock official LFC merchandise, and are licensed with the Premier League and UEFA to sell official iron-on shirt badges and sleeve patches. As a listener to this podcast, you can get 10% off everything with coupon code AIPRO10. Just head over to anfieldindex.shop or find us on Etsy by searching for Anfield Index. Yeah, um, uh, what what did you make of that? Because I kind of felt like, ah, shit, but I suppose if you, I'm, I'm of that belief now, like, Okay, you know, maybe, you know, I just felt like he just put, he seemed to have wanted it more than our defenders. Because I think he was in between both Gomez and Virgil van Dijk, am I right? Yeah. Yeah, he was. And, he, you know, like, you know, fair play to him because, like, obviously, like, they don't score an awful lot of goals. But great response for them. Wanted to show their manager. Um, it was all even. But one thing I liked was the fact that Anfield did not seem rattled by that. They just carried on singing. <laughs> that, that's true okay I, I mean that that's an important point i think is is that a lot of the chagrin that was accompanying the early part of the season some of that has has rightfully washed away as performances have gotten slightly better organization and performances on the field have increased but yeah no nins i agree with you i mean there was a lot of initial dissection on the whatsapp groups and stuff i'm in some people were assigning a little bit of blame to Alison for, you know, being stuck in kind of no man's land. I I didn't see that myself, but uh, I mean, I'm open to kind of analysis uh, and well, what you guys think on that. That might be something to discuss, but I, I'm totally with you. And look, let's not take away from James Ward Prowse, who's the, um, who's that, who's that guy that we had? Um, he literally just, that's all he did was long passes and free kicks and corners. And he looked like he ate pies for a living. Um, Charlie, Charlie something? Charlie yeah, Adams? He, yeah. Was it Charlie Adams? I think that was, yeah, that was, wow, I'm getting so old with this memory thing. <laughs> Not yeah, as it, old as him. He looks about 158. <laughs> but, you know, he's really like 36, does. yeah, or whatever he is, my word. Like, he was always the player manager. But um, uh, it, it just seemed like, you know, James O'Prowse seems to be on the field for that. And it seems to be a, a, slightly, a better version of, of Charlie Adams. But essentially, that's what he does. He does it really well. Uh, that was a, an extremely well hit free kick. It was so fast. Uh, the speed was absolutely incredible. The placement was wonderful. 
And Shea Adams knew exactly where he had to go to get it. Um, James O'Prost knew exactly where Shea was going to be to hit it. And I, but I totally agree with you, Nins. Looking at that replay, um, you're just watching. Uh, I think Verge. I think Shea was Verge's guy, but I don't. I don't actually care who it was. There's somebody who's got a totally free header. Yeah. From a free kick, where you know the free kick taker is absolutely brilliant at doing this. And I, I agree with you. It just felt like he wanted it a bit more. It felt like we didn't follow him. Maybe we were looking for an offside in, in that respect or something like with our high line. Yeah, I think, I think the you're defending right because, wasn't great. I think you're right because when I watch, I've not watched the replays, um, but I saw Ali um, look at the linesman and when he didn't flag, he started like flapping his hands like in anger and frustration. Mm. So I think that's what they were playing for. I think you're, you're spot on there. Lisa, I'm going to come to you. Talk to me about the the, uh, the concession of the goal, um, what, how you felt and what you made of it. And then I'd like you to talk about how that maybe was the wake-up call for Liverpool because I felt like after that, we took control of the game. And we'll, we'll, you know, I'd like to get your thoughts on that. No, I, I agree with what you both have said regarding their goals so far. I mean, it was... It was... A bit lazy, I think, from us. Just you're right. Uh, I think Kay, you were the one who just said. I mean, we should have expected. That's what Ward Prowse is known for: is putting in those crosses, free kicks to, you know, to for goals. So we we should have done better there. But but you know, hindsight is always always best. So I I thought it took us a minute or two though to respond. I I felt like for the couple minutes immediately after the goal, we were a little. You know, I don't want to say we were shaking because it wasn't that, but it but it felt like we were trying to find where we needed to be. It, it felt a bit frantic, if that's the right word. Um, but then you're right. Then we did kind of we settled in. Um, we kind of got back to the front foot, and um, you know, then then the rest of the half was was really quite enjoyable um, moving forward. <laughs> It really was. And um, Kay, I'm going to come to you because, um, of course, you know, it was really, really nice to see, you know, Darwin Nunes have the game that he did. And, you know, of course, he's the one that gets the goal. But before that as well, I just want to kind of highlight something. I think it's around about 15 minutes. You know, I think Robbo finds Darwin Nunes and he just goes on a run down the left and, you know, mm-hmm. just beats his man for pace and just squares it to Salah and forces him, you know, a quality save from uh, their keeper. Um, but, you know, we started seeing um, flashes and clicks of the attack doing really well and there's a lot of interchangingness. I mean, you know, sometimes you see Nunes central, sometimes you see him on the left, sometimes on the right, more Salah would switch with him. Mm. But I felt like there was a bit more, I don't know, license of fluidity in terms of what they were trying to do in attack. Mm. Um, did you pick up on that as well? Yeah, I mean, I saw, you know, in, in, especially as the game went on, you don't see Darwin on the, um, on the right-hand side that much, and he was this time. You know, so it, it seemed like before there's a quite clear instruction for him to stay left and centre. And here he was just all, you know, he was just uh, exchanging positions with literally everybody. And then Mo as well, you know, it gives him more license to come inside. And I thought he got a few more touches today, but definitely Nins. I, I felt that that was, uh, that was a, you know, really. And to be honest, like that, just before we get onto the goal, I think that's one of the reasons why, speaking to your point, Nins, one of the things is, you know, when we say that new members freshen up the squad, I, I think Darwin has had that influence on the squad just because he's come in. And as he settled down, one thing that we know about Darwin Nunes is this boy's not going to stop running. And he's going to create havoc everywhere he goes. He's just going to run and run and run and cause more and more and more chaos for the opposition team. And I think that affects the squad where they go like, well, we know this guy's going to run. So we've, got, we've just conceded a goal. It's equalized. We know this is going to take off now. And Darwin Nunes just doesn't stop running. And that's a nice point of leadership. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, just thought I'd mention that. Absolutely, yeah. He looks, the more I watch him play, um, the more he looks more settled, the more he looks more confident and more assured. And Lisa, I'm going to come to you and I want you to talk about the goal. 20, it happened on the, like, I think around about 21st minute. Um, what really, I want you to talk about the goal, but you know, um, I think for me, some, um, what really impressed me about the goal was, um, just the build up to it. I mean, you know, there were some lovely passes. We were winning the second ball. We were pressing them in their own half. And then, of course, um, you know, 
also great decision making as well where Bobby Firmino just decides to step back and let Elliot deal with it and Elliot puts in a gorgeous um, across your boy Elliot have to go there and he, you know he finds Nunes who just slots it in but for me it was a really really well worked goal like it, we, we made something out of nothing and we made sure that we were going to press them and make hound them in their own half to create something and that is an intensity and that is a kind of attitude of Liverpool that I was accustomed to before what I've been watching this season yeah it does give us hope that we're starting to see what we've always expected from this team start to come you know back to the forefront you know, these these lovely passes and link-ups and, and things like that. I mean, I really felt that um, Darwin and um, Robertson were really starting to get kind of an understanding down that left side. You know, there were some nice, you know, give-and-goes between them and, you know, yes. passes and, you know, everything. I, I saw it just a couple of times. I didn't necessarily note when and where, but it was something I noted throughout the game that they, you know, I think are starting to develop, you know, which – I think I said on this podcast at some point earlier, you know, that that is something that just takes time. I think we got so used to seeing it between Robertson and Mane down that left side the last couple of years, you know, that they expected it. And, you know, and it's not fair to expect new players to come in and, you know, they automatically have that same understanding. But anyway, um, yes. Um, in fact, I said that to more than one person that, you know, I was very proud of my fourth child, Harvey Elliott's, um, Pass there for the second goal. Um, <laughs> I actually thought he had a good game as well today. He did. I thought he had a very, you know, I am a little biased and I try to try to hold myself back. Um, but no, I think he did have a very good game. I, you know, I mean, I think we're really, we're really starting. I mean, you know, I still see in, in people, you know, I mean, yes, there are aspects of his game that still need to be developed. He's 19, he's 19 years old. He won't be 20 until I think the spring sometime. I mean, it, it just, it's going to come. Um, but I think he's starting to respond to that. And I think we are seeing better off the ball, better defensive work and everything else from him. But, I mean, he had some beautiful passes today. I mean, absolutely beautiful passes. But, but no, that build up that second goal was, it was just, it's what, again, it, it, it felt familiar because it was familiar. It is what we are used to seeing from this Liverpool side. And and it's just one of the things that, you know, kind of brings a smile to my face as, as we come away from this, you know, to go into that long break that, you know, hopefully we can hold on to some of these things and they just come right back to us um, when we start back up after the World Cup. Absolutely, Lisa. That's that's the hope, isn't it? That is the total hope that, you know, we, we take this forward now. And um Okay, I'm going to come to you. I mean, talk to me about um, uh, Nunez's um, first goal against um, our second against um, Southampton, and what aspects of it really what impressed you about it? What I love most about the goal, and and if you allow me, Nins, I'll talk more about Darwin with the second goal. Um, but what I loved about with Darwin's second goal, sorry, <laughs> um, which we'll come to now. But our second goal, Darwin's first goal, the thing that caught my attention in this. Um, and let's just, you know, if you'd excuse me, Anfield Index listeners, uh, just to ignore the whole actual scoring of the goal for now, we just want to concentrate on the Harvey pass. What yeah. I loved about the Harvey pass was that All about the Harvey Bobby... <laughs> yes! <laughs> That's Sorry, I couldn't help myself. <laughs> uh, what I love about it is Bobby is in the same position essentially as Elliot. And he turns around and sees Elliot is on the ball. And what happens next is, to me, just it really was so heartwarming. But Firmino looks at him and immediately, immediately just goes, I totally trust you. Yes, he And he runs me, away yeah. from the ball. He runs away from the ball to make space, to essentially take away a potential defender uh, from Harvey. So he just got, has a bit more time, a bit more room. And then Harvey, you know, does that dink and, and, and Firmino's trust is really rewarded in the fact that it ends up in the goal. That is, it, to me, it's incredible. It's just incredible. It's volumes, kids, isn't it, of his development. It's, it's, it's volumes. Everyone trusts him. And that's amazing to me. It's just amazing. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm absolutely with you. And, um, yeah, I, I thought Elia um, uh, had, a, for me, like, his, like some of the passes, like I think Lisa spoke about as well, 
were just an um, absolute sensation. And you could see him kind of growing, growing more into the game and, you know, trying to take on shots as well and commentating. Did he mean that? You know, and they're like, uh, it's so strange that we're saying this about a 19-year-old because you'd never ever say that mm. about a 19-year-old. Mm. And, you know, that, um, I mean, credit to him. And, you know, I think we're not getting carried away. We know that he needs to work on certain aspects of his game and he's certainly trying to. But in this game, maybe his defensive work wasn't as under the scrutiny as it, could be mm. against other opposition because I felt like today he had like the free reign to be more involved in an attacking sense and he certainly did that and helped and assisted to the best of his ability so you know what a special 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 shout out to Elliot I thought he had a really good game do you know do you know what it is Nins it, you know what it is it's because of the way Harvey Elliott has come into the team mm. he, he's coming to the team and he's turned around and looked at it and he goes whoa there's Mo Salah oh my goodness there's Mane you know there's Firmino and there's Thiago and there's all these players around me and he started from the perspective of doing simple passes, right? Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll just link the play where I can. And he started off as more of a link man than anything else. And he's growing into kind of a, a, a wider number 10, if I can call it that. But as he's growing, he's adding these things to his game where he's growing into it more and more. But we know that the foundation is, if he just has to make that simple pass, he will do that. You know, and that that to me is so reassuring. It it comes from a place of less ego and more just helping the team to go mm-hmm. forward. And as he grows more into his abilities, he's going to keep on with that. You know, he doesn't seem like a like a player or a person who's going to get too big headed about this. And that's extremely exciting. I think he's a very he's a very intelligent player. Um, you know, you can see that in the way he plays the game. I think um, that it's that it's. You know, he, he, I don't know, I, I don't even know how to describe it, but, but I just, he just strikes me as, as a very intelligent player who, who sees and he isn't, yeah, he, he's trying to, to make an impact, but he's, but he's not doing it from, yeah, as, as you say, from like kind of a showboating or, you know, that aspect of it. And it's what, 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 what's the best pass for me to make, you know, to move this, to move the play forward to, you know, to allow the team to be in a good position. So. I'm sorry, Nins, this is a Harvey Elliott appreciation pod now. Apparently it is. <laughs> I, I apparently is, and I'm here for it. And I have to agree with both of you. And you know what? I think that is a perfect um, summary of, of Harvey Elliott, and I'm, I'm glad he got some love. Um, Kay, I'll come back to you. Um, 40, 41 minutes, I think it took, and Nunes gets his second. You want to talk about this, and you want to talk about what impressed you, uh, you know, Robo to um, uh, Nunez um, across the face of goal. Um, Nunez was going to always put that in. But, you know, another thing that kind of impressed me as well was maybe the initial ball by Bobby that found Robo as well that kind of got that moving. Yeah, I mean, Bobby was he, he was just brilliant today in the way he helped the build up play, um, led the defense from the front, and et cetera. You know, Bobby things uh, as we this thing up. I love that um, Robo also got involved into this action in terms of getting on the assists again. And uh, he's, he's starting to, you know, after his injury and, uh, and all that, just starting to come into the team in the Robo way, you know, uh, staking his claim to that place once again, which is what you want. Um, what, what I just wanted to say very quickly about Darwin Nunes is that movement of his is wonderful. That work rate is absolutely incredible. The criticism we've had of him so far, I think, is he's missing the easy chances and then scoring the belters. And I felt of his performance today a little bit. It's starting to feel, I'm hoping, it's starting to feel, though, to me, like Darwin Nunes is hitting the corners. He's starting to hit the corners. And he's starting to just get that finishing a little bit correct. The running in front of the keeper was was absolutely insane to know that you're going to get there before. For his first goal, to, to put it past the keeper in that way, and okay, maybe we can uh, put a pin in this and say we have to see how he gets tested against better keepers. So, you know, I'm, I'm not saying he's, he's totally, you know, the, the finished product or anything like that now. I, I'm, I'm just saying that the way he scored the goals today, he didn't need to pull out that belter to get on the score sheet. That's what you want to see. You want to see him rack up the numbers, doing things that you expect, having tap-ins, and then hitting corners, you know, any time you take a shot. And for if Darwin Nunes starts doing that, if he starts regularly hitting the corners, we've got a, an incredible monster of a player in our hands. I mean, I think everybody can see that we are, you know, super excited about what he brings and how he's growing into this Liverpool team. Um, I'm excited to watch the World Cup to see how... 
he uh, he plays you know with, with Uruguay system and and his confidence and how he grows in that. But let, you know all these things. Every game, it seems like we've got a little more to be excited about Darwin Nunes. It's it's lovely to watch. Absolutely, and you know, just on your point there as well, Kay. Before I come to Lisa, I mean, you know, you you, you know, you, I like the fact that you highlight that he's finding the corners now, which is really good, and also how would he fare against other, you know, like better keepers? And I think there's a handful of like, you know keepers that you would say that are good in the Premier League but you know as far as the Southampton keepers are concerned he's not one of the worst for me like I I do think there are like worse keepers in the Premier League and I'm looking at Leicester City Uh, um you know no judgment I mean did you see Pickford today did you see that did you see what he did I've, I've oh not my had Lord. the privilege. Yeah, I've not had the privilege, but I think you know, um, uh, Ward for Leicester is is dreadful. But you know, I think you know, Bazunu, um, you know, and I only discovered today he's the youngest goalkeeper in the Premier League for some strange reason. Mm. I always thought it was Melier because he looks about three. But here you go. I'm <laughs> I'm I'm happy to be educated. Um, I absolutely do agree with you. You know what I loved about that as well. After the, it was a goal celebration, and I saw Bobby Firmino patting Fabinho on his head. And it just made me laugh. I have no idea what was going on, but he was just patting him on his head. But, you know, a random side little wholesome moment that made me smile. But Lisa, I'm going to come to you. Um, Darwin Nunes, talk to me, because um, the, the Mauritian one here has got um, a squawker stat here. Darwin, Darwin Nunes is game by numbers versus Southampton. Six touches in the opposition box, five possessions won, three shots, three shots on target, three duels won. Three final third entries, three big chances, two goals, two two chances created, and he finished off the game on 0.72 xG. I mean, we used to call him Agent Chaos. Um, he's slowly becoming to maybe Agent Efficiency. <laughs> I hope. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it is nice. It is nice, and again, it's a little bit frustrating that that he does seem to finally be settling in you know, to to what we wanted and even expected from him at, at the beginning of the season. Um, in fact, the pundits on uh, the coverage I was watching were, were kind of saying some of the same things that, um, you know, it was probably after he scored the second goal. But, but yeah, we're we're starting to to see that. And, and as I said, it is a little bit frustrating that, you know, and now we have this long break. Yep. But, but it is what it is. And then, I mean, and again, it's not a break. I don't know, pros, cons. I mean, he, you know, he, I imagine he'll be playing fairly regularly for Uruguay through the, you know, through the World Cup. And, and so that may be good. That may just keep his momentum, you know, moving forward for us. Um, and, you know, so that, that, you know, we can take advantage of it. But yeah, I mean, I, I felt like, you know, by the time that third goal was scored, we had really put some composure back into our game that, you know, we mm. had, we had the reins and we were just driving it at a very, you know, steady pace, you know, to, to move toward halftime. And, and yeah, I, I had written for that third goal. I'm just like, third goal was a beauty because it was, it was just, again, it was, it was back to the stuff that we used to see all the time. And, and it was just, you know, what we expected from this team. And, and it's just, it just feels nice to, to, to be seeing these types of things again. And um, it's like they found themselves. <laughs> like, oh, wait, this is the way we're supposed to play. <laughs> Got it. Um, so let's just hope they don't forget again. Yeah, but it, no, Darwin is, I mean, he is, you know, and I was always of the opinion, you know, we need to give him time. You know, he's coming into a completely different league, a completely different team. There's the language barrier, you know, all these things. We need to give him the proper time to settle. And and I mean, I think it was just, a, it was a multitude of things that all of those that I just said, along with, you know, the frustration from the red card and the Palace game. And, and I think he had a huge weight on his shoulders, you know, coming in and expecting to perform at such a high level and, again, against Holland. It's all these things. And I think it's it seems to have all smoothed itself out, which I honestly expected it would. It was just going to take the time. And I think, again, the additional frustration was because we did not start the season off well as a team. So it's yeah, just so you can't really put it on him. It was yeah. just a whole combination of, of stuff. Um, yep. But I was always of an opinion that it was going to come. We just needed, we just needed to be patient. And, and it is, it's just such a lovely thing to see, you know, not, not just for the team, but for him, because 
he seems like kind of a nice guy. Yeah, I like him as well. Kind of prickly and you want to get on his good side. But yeah, yeah I, I yeah. agree with you. Deep down, he's he's, yeah, he's got a good like heart. I, I agree. Yeah, Harvey's, I, told I, I, Harvey's told me. He's he's great. <laughs> but who are we to dispute with, dispute with that? Absolutely. Um, yeah. And I'm, and I'm uh, absolutely nail on the head there, Lisa. And another thing is, well, you, you, you mentioned the word composure and, we, you know, and composed. And, you know, just little things that kind of stood out to me in that half. And I just remember in one instance, and I think it was in the first half, but Tiago, with his gorgeous feet, just dances out of the tackle and just, like, carries the ball past, yes. you know. And, and you know, just little the, things like that. The, the... I want to see, I want so, to see Tiago on a dance floor. It tells me he's got some moves. I just oh, kind of... absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I, I definitely think he's got some moves. And, um, you know, on a side note, um, I know this sounds awful, but I'm glad he's not going to the World Cup. I'm with you. I'm with you. Yeah. I, I had the exact same reaction when I saw the Spanish team announced. You know, I feel bad for him because this is likely his last opportunity yes. to go. But on the other hand, I feel good for us. So, yep. um, because you know, we would have gotten injured. You know, you know, we would have gotten injured. <laughs> just it's so horrible to say um but yeah i know i do i feel badly for him um you know same way i feel badly for, for Firmino. But, um but but i feel good for liverpool so my my loyalties are a bit torn there yeah absolutely i'm i'm with you on that one and yeah i mean i think I think we can all agree that we kind of finished the second half in very much in control it was quite easy viewing wasn't it Kay? i mean we had seven shots on target we kept the ball well it looked like conceding that goal um really put um uh, you know kind of woke us up and we decided that we just kind of wanted to end this half of the season on in a controlled measure in in a winning way in a professional way um uh, i'd say would you say that's fair I would say generally that's fair, Nins. I, I would like to just get your opinion, uh, both your and Lisa Marie's opinion, just on, you know, there was that little period where it, it just felt like, I mean, that was the, there was the period in which Ali had the two or three, you know, saves to make. And th that just felt like a little bit of complacency creeping in. It felt like we had this game in the bag. We understood where Southampton were and uh, what their intensity levels were, where they were as a team. We were 3-1 up and we were fine. And we came into the second half, did really well. It was just very much controlled. And then there was a little period where we seemed to lose things and then we grabbed control again. And uh, I think uh, I, I usually criticize club for this, but the, the, the subs were fine. You know, they, they helped, I think, today in just clawing that back and, and, and getting our foot back on the ground to, to just essentially say, no, Southampton, you know, not today. It's, it's not going to it's not going to work today. But I, I just feel that in that middle, those two or three shots, that should not have happened. Um, and thank goodness we had Hali because the way the team is going, um, you know, you don't want to test it at the moment. You don't. You just want to get that good win. You just want to get that under the belt, and then things will start working. It feels like. No, I, th I think I think you're right there. And obviously, Lisa, come to you second half because Bobby um, has a header from a corner. You know, Salah tries to play a gorgeous pass to Nunes, and if it if uh, it was cut out, but had he played that, you know, he I think he desperately wanted um, Nunes to get his hat trick. And then we're talking about the little wobble, um, the you know, the wobbling moments of um of a couple of um you know of their chances where we kind of fall asleep i just feel like it's um it is a little bit of switching off from us at times and but then i do agree with k because he's speaking about ali there and we you and i have spoken about ali alice and becca at length on this podcast for many a times you know if it wasn't for him i think we would be a relegation team but credit to our keeper, because even though he had very little to do and we looked in control, the fact that he was still alert. And to me, that is a sign of a world-class keeper that he does not switch off or shut off from the game, regardless of how, how you, know, you know, the lack of um, uh, you know, busyness that he might have in the game. I, I, yeah, I agree with everything both you and, and Kay have just said. I mean, that was kind of my notes. You know, I thought we started the second half off, you know, pretty well. Um, maybe not quite as high tempo as I, I kind of would have liked just coming mm -hmm. off of that high on the, you know, end of the first half, but but started off well. Um, and yeah, there were some nice chances that, you know, the header from Firmino that, you know, Mo had a couple. 
Um, oh, there was one. I made this note because I thought it was kind of funny. Um, it was about 51 minutes. Is that um, play where Mo really kind of used his body, you know, to force the, the corner, kept possession, and, you know. And one of the pundits was like, you know, he really used, Mo Salah really uses his body well. You know, he's surprisingly strong. You, you wouldn't necessarily think that to look at him. And then I was like, have you not seen the pictures? I mean, I've seen the pictures where he starts off. What, what, what do you, you not look at it? Just, it's just one of those things that you pick up, you know, time to time in the little pundit chat that just made me giggle. So anyway, that's just an aside, but no, yeah, but then you're right. It was like, we, we, we sort of switched, I don't know, switched off, got distracted, maybe it was, or maybe even for Southampton, you know, it, it seemed it was after they kind of made their changes that they made it like 58, 59 minutes. But that was when, you know, they, so maybe those changes were good for them. Um, and maybe it was just a little shift for us, not knowing what to expect from you know, the new players that had come on. But, but no, we did, you know, we got distracted by, you know, some shiny thing in the stands or something. I don't know. Um, but as I have said, um, you know, as you said, as I have said more than once on this podcast, thank God for Allison Becker. Um, cause yeah, I, I shudder to think where we might be, um, if we didn't have him. Although, you know what, if we had Kelleher, it would probably be okay. You know, um, agree with you on that one. Yeah. Yeah. Great shout though about the subs though, because I, was, I think it was, um, a world Cup, um, a do um uh, make no nails and i can't think of the third one that came on but yet yeah, obviously they've got a point to prove as well new manager yep. you know they you know they yep. you know i mean i am so i mean walcott the fact that he still plays football just absolutely i find it so staggering because i remember he was meant to be the greatest thing when he burst onto the scene as a 16 year old or 17 year old but yeah um i i would agree with you their subs you know were, were coming out and um you know they probably wanted to um you know create a bit of ripples there and uh, then, you know, of course, within make... that, you know, I mean, I have a note here that, you know, Virgil, there was that really nice Virgil block against Shea Adams. So, I mean, yeah. while we sort mm. of, you know, I don't know, veered off course, if you will, we, we corrected and got and got back, um, you know, mm. and, and, and then I think, you know, our subs probably, you know, help things too. You know, first you have the father son sub of um, Milner on for Elliot. <laughs> And uh, <laughs> sorry, I think that every time I think it every single time because it just cracks me up. So are you? <laughs> and I love Dave Milner. You you su- are you suggesting? Are you suggesting then that you and Milner created this child? Oh, <laughs> not my words. Not my words. But okay. She's gone. Sorry, quiet, I had I to be there for a minute. Because yeah. you made me laugh and I started coughing. Um, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> this podcast could go a whole other direction. Um, <laughs> you, not, let me see. I did not go there. I, I, I used to do. I used to do Liverpool fan fiction after, <laughs> like, like a Jerry Ray. I, I feel we could go that way again. <laughs> you know what, Kay? I think I think you've got an opening right there. I I do it, do it. That's all I'm gonna say. But on on a serious note, though, you know when they had those moments? Can I just ask you? Because I always talk about how I'm initially feeling because this is a raw podcast, raw reaction. When they had those moments, did you actually shit your pants? Because I did not. I'm going to be honest with you. And that's my test right there. I didn't know. I mean, I probably, I have, okay. The Spurs shit me up last week. I'm not going to lie. Spurs did. Oh, This didn't. Okay. And I didn't watch the Spurs game live. So it was mm. totally, I, I went back and watched it after the fact. And if I had been watching that live, yes, I likely would have had some sort of heart attack during the second half. There is no doubt about it. But I had the, um, you know, the relief of knowing that it all came out okay. Yeah. So, um, oh, the luxury. Oh, yes, the luxury. Because yes, no, I would have, I would have worn a path in my carpet, pacing if I had been watching that in real time. But no, I mean, I felt in the past. I probably, you know, like if previous season, you know, with, with, you know, better starts and, you know, things ticking over the way they should be, I wouldn't have likely been nervous. I would have been like, oh yeah, we got this. I have to say that I don't generally have the same, I don't have that level of confidence, but I wasn't as, 
unnerved, if you will, as I have been in some previous games this season. So somewhere in between there, you know, not not fully confident, but not, you know, completely freaking out either. Fair enough. Okay, you? Yeah, I, th- I think the issue, is, well, well, the kind of uh, discomfort with it, if I can call it that, is after they have a couple of chances in a row, at the end of that, you're kind of thinking back and going, Phew, if they had scored a couple of these, if they had scored one of these, the scoreline is, you know, 3-2, and we're nervous, if they, and they could have scored another one, and then, you know, then it's left. It, it, it's It's... Kind of as a fan, I think, you know, you backtrack a little bit and then you go like, oh my goodness, they've had these two chances. They could have had two goals. Um, and that's where the discomfort kind of comes from. So I think it's a great point you make then. And um, I think we as fans tend to, uh, you know, create bigger situations than they are. We feel a little bit more nervous than they are. But I agree with you. It's not, it wasn't in the moment for me. It was thinking back on the chances. So, yes. yeah, no, no, great observation. Yeah, And also as well, Southampton are not a high-scoring team as well. Like, you know, I yeah. think the reason why they're in the relegation battle is the fact that they're not really great defensively and they're just not scoring enough goals. They don't actually play bad football, in my opinion, but it's just mm. the, the two... On the two ends, they've, they've got the worst end of the deal because, you know, someone like Leeds, for example, who were a relegation threatened team, you knew they couldn't defend, but you knew that, you know, they can pass the ball really well, they press really well, and, uh, you know, they, they're quite good in a creative sense. Wolves can't score, so they're very similar to, like, Southampton in that regard. And, you know, not in Forest, I believe that he's just got so many players and he doesn't know what his best starting eleven is. You know, like, but they, their conundrum Southampton's, which the new manager has to work on, is the fact that get them, and they're quite a young team as well, to, you know, fix them in a defensive sense and then fix them in an attacking sense. That's, that's my, from, from what I've been watching of Southampton this season. However, they did beat Chelsea at the beginning of the season, round about um, in August. So they can stick it to a big team. And they did draw to Arsenal. So, you know, maybe you guys were onto something that I should have been a bit worried, but um, uh, my arrogance took over me. But um, I'm, I'm glad I'm smug right now. But yeah, uh, that's my thought on that. Guys, I've got, um, uh, Lisa, you spoke about Jurgen Klopp's subs there and obviously Millie coming on for Elliot, who I thought had a wonderful game. 68 minutes just to tighten things up. I kind of like Millie's um, entrance into this game because he had a few like darting, drilling runs in the middle of the, you know, um, uh, into the box, which I quite liked. Yeah. <laughs> I did. I thought, you know, I thought, I mean, I was okay with that as a substitution. I saw some chat in the Discord where people were like, we need subs. And, you know, I kind of looked at who was on the bench and I was kind of like, okay, who? And then, of course, when you saw Milner coming on for Elliot, there were the usual, uh, you know, complaints. Um, But I thought this was kind of a good game. This was the type of game maybe where we needed Milner on just, you know, to kind of help shore things up a little bit. Um, For the most part, so I, I was okay with I was okay with that one. Um, yeah, same. Yeah, I mean, and I, then Bobby, Bobby and Ox. What did you make of that one? Because I thought I felt like Ox. You know, it was nice to kind of see him get some minutes as well. And um, yeah, yeah, I, I was very calm with the subs today. I think I'm with Kay today. Yeah, no, I was. I was. I was okay with. Um, now when I saw yeah, so Bobby on or Ox on for Bobby. I was I was good with that. I thought you know we needed fresh legs up front um i think you know i thought we're going to do us some good you know to see out the game and then you know do you want to go forward to the to the mass substitution (laughs) um the three in later on Mm -hmm. yeah i mean i was you know obviously cost us for for robertson that's that's a given that's that's good now when i saw that phillips was coming on i was a little bit like oh hey what is gomez coming off please don't take virgil off um, but, but yeah, but Trent coming off, um, Joe Gomez shifting over to right back. I mean, again, I thought that was, I thought that was, you know, that was again, good. Um, and then, um, you know, Carvalho coming on for Darwin again, I, I thought all the subs were, you know, I was, I was okay with all of them. I, I, you know, I wasn't like, yay, hurrah, but you know, but I also, you know, there wasn't that groan that we often have when we see substitutions too. So I, I thought they were fine and, and I think they, they did what they needed to do, which was to kind of hold the line and see the game out. Yeah, I would call them professional subs in the sense that, yeah. you know what, let's just see this out. I, I would agree with you there, Lisa. Uh, Kay, what did you make of all the subs in general? 
Yeah, I, I, I'm, I like that you mentioned Ox. I like that he's getting a couple of minutes here and there and, and building himself up back to hopefully, you know, uh, have a chance at, uh, at, at doing something substantial. Because uh, I, I loved him. He had a time for us even when he was, when he was really, really good. And I, I think very few players really give you what he gives. So it's nice to see him uh, have those couple of minutes and hopefully he gets back to his best in the future and, and hopefully that's at you know as at Liverpool or if, even if it's somewhere else and uh, late in his career then then cool you know you <laughs> you feel for a, a person who's had such terrible injuries um, I, I thought the most telling injury though was Milner uh, he usually does this impression of like man falling over and then you you have to see what comes afterwards is it in a good way or is it in a bad way and uh, sometimes it's in a bad way. He, you know, he kind of dives in in the midfield, leaves his space open and things like that. And you're like, oh my word, he looks really old and slow. And today, he, he did fall over a couple of times, but it was all so well done. That little run he did where he was almost falling over, but at the same time getting past every player that came to challenge him, I thought it was amazing. Um, and then he did some really in, you know, important defensive contributions, which just, again, lays down a marker as a substitute. And it says... You know, the guy before me, maybe the person I replaced had tied legs. I'm going to show you that I'm going to put all my 90 minutes of legs into the 10 minutes I've got to, 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 defend, uh, to, to defend what we have. And it's going to be yeah. very hard for you to, to get on. And that, that is what you want from a sub. So exemplary, I thought, from him today. He just, he just did really well. That attitude, he came on and, and stopped things. And yeah, that was, and it, it helped turn the game back into the control that we wanted into our favor. Yeah. Agreed. I mean, guys, have you got any more that you kind of want to mention from this game? Because I felt like Mo was really, really searching for his goal. That's the kind of note that I got on Mo Salah. I don't think he had a, a bad game. I felt like he was just definitely um, probably less uh, probably less effective than the other two attackers. But you could even from the uh, till the very end, he was trying and he was searching. And, uh, you know, people at Trent were trying to find him. And obviously his header went over. I think it was earlier on in the first half. But he definitely, definitely wanted a goal. But for me, I was just, after, I think after about 75 minutes, I was in pretty much relaxation mode. I mean, how were you guys? Lisa, I'll come to you first. Hello. I'm here to annoy you. I'm here to annoy you into listening to more of me and more of others on EPL Index. We don't just have the Anfield Index stuff. We've got EPL Index as well, which covers the entirety of the Premier League. And we have three podcasts and a whole bunch of really good writing on EPLindex.com. The podcasts are my own two-footed podcast, which is every day at 4 p.m., Monday through Friday, covering the whole league. We have a Tad Predictable hosted by Tadiwa. You know Tadiwa. He does Anfield Index. He presents a Tad Predictable before every Premier League match week. And then Kevin DeVries and his crew on the EPL Roundtable, there every week after the Premier League match week. So make sure you listen to everything we're doing on EPL Index and follow us there on Twitter, at EPL Index. Thank you. Bye-bye. Um, I was maybe a little bit later than 75 minutes, but yes. God, I'm so bad. I feel awful. Um, yeah, no, I, I, it was probably, it was probably a little bit closer to 80, but, but no, I did. I felt, you know, of course, yeah, the, as we talked about the subs, I felt really just sort of helped shore things up and, um, you know, and just brought back that control we needed. And yeah, as I, I felt that we certainly were going to be able to see the game out to a win. I just hope that it, you know, it stayed at that three, one scoreline, um, you know, and we didn't, we didn't see anything else, but, but yeah, it, it, it was just nice. It was it was just it was just nice to have. I don't want to say completely stress free watch to a match, but because sometimes you know you want that little bit of I don't know anxiety or whatever. That's what makes it exciting. But um, but you know, but not to the levels of as you mentioned. I, the, I assume the Tottenham game was uh, last week. Yes. So you know, I mean, but it was. It was just. It just. It just. Just leaves again, and I know I've mentioned this 95 times, you know, as we go into the break, it's the way I wanted us to finish this part of the season. You know, we're putting things right. 
you know, it's positive and, and, you know, and, and most importantly, we've got that win. And, and I think it's just, I think it's the best possible way for us to, you know, to draw a line going into the World Cup. Absolutely. As things stand, Liverpool are currently sixth in the Premier League table. Um, let's hope it stays that way. Uh, Kay, I'll come to you. Any... I'll see you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, progress, people, progress. Absolutely. It's so bad, though, isn't it? Man City, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm going to go on a tangent. Then we can talk about Ali's beard, because I'm. that's the little <laughs> side note that we all need to address. <laughs> but can I just say something? Man City lost today, and they I lost in quite a dramatic yeah. fashion, right? Yeah. And I felt yeah. nothing, because it meant nothing to me because of where we were, and I felt disgusted. But I was, I was just thinking about how Arsenal fans must be feeling right now. And I'm not going to lie. You know, Nins, Nins of, uh, while we were watching it, because um, uh, Ez watches with me, and, and she said, well, you know, she loves when the underdog beats, uh, you know, the, the Goliath in, in the whole situation. It's, it's, it's a lovely story. And then, she, you know, she, she, we kind of just went quiet for a little bit, and she said, can you imagine AFTV if Arsenal actually win the league? Oh, Oh, God, it terrible. I just thought I was scrolling through my phone on Tuesday. I just looked up and I was like, oh, no. <laughs> like, let's not imagine that. Let's, uh, let's do something else. Yes, yes, I'd rather not think about that. <laughs> you know what? A special shout out to Brentford, you know, because I don't think they travel well on the road. And to beat Man City at Etihad, my word, you know, that I is... I don't think um, they've won on the road this season and, and yeah. uh, City had not lost a home game this season. They yeah. so you know, have not to them. won against Man City since 1937. Uh, yep, yeah. I heard that. Yeah. That's, that's that. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so. right, you know what? So that was our little weird tangent that we couldn't get excited about the Man City score, it, which was painful. You guys wanted to talk about it. So, you know what? Let's just quickly go there before we close the pod and go to Man of the Match and such things. Ethan Becker's beard or lack thereof. <laughs> I mean, I am a little bit traumatized. Can't lie. I don't, I don't like it. There. I don't yeah, like it. We need a petition. We need hmm. something as a fan group to respond to this. I, I don't know <laughs> what we can do. Maybe Spirit of Shankly can help us out or something like that. But this stuff is, you can't just do that and then just rock up at the game. Like nothing. Like it's fine. It's he's not fine, really, Mr. Becker. You know, it's not fine. He's trimmed it before, which I'm okay with that, you know, when it's the more, you know, no. shorter beard. But yeah, the completely clean shaven thing. I mean, I, that was the first thing I honestly noticed as he was coming, as he led, you know, you know as he came to the bench, I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. It was like when Mo <laughs> Salah shaved his own you know, back. It was like, <laughs> that's weird. I don't know what to do with this. So. And it comes to something when it threw your analysis off for the first goal as well, because you actually <laughs> said I was not in, in focus because I, my mind was preoccupied with Alison Becker. Do you see distractions? <laughs> well, you know, I mean, Alison Becker can distract me on other occasions too. But, um, yeah, I mean, because it just kept striking me that when they would show shots of him down, you know, in front of the goal, it just, it, it didn't, it almost didn't look like him because you didn't have that, you know, Know, dark lower half of his face so anyway it was a little bit str- it was just it was a little bit unusual I'm i just guessing- kept on going like who is that oh it's yeah. Alison. Yeah. i did who's that the- like three times yes <laughs> yeah who the hell is that who is that <laughs> who are you who's the new goalkeeper yeah no it was probably- <laughs> i mean i can only probably when he did it maybe- he's, just what, like, past him. he's trying to get that off for the heat of the world cup you know warmer oh, climate oh, thinking oh it'll oh, be cooler go. i mean that's my thought i don't know Anyway, I uh, you know okay. what? No, no, what? I mean it's fine. It just next time it just needs to tell us before. Yes. Just you know, it, it just needs there absolutely. needs to be some sort of announcement he needs for these to kinds check of in things. with the rest of us before he does that. <laughs> Klopp does a whole pre press conference, a, a whole pre game press conference. That should be one of the things. I blame the media. Actually, the media should have asked. This should be a standing question. <laughs> <laughs> love it, love it. Right, guys, so we've enjoyed this game. Um, obviously, great result for the Reds. Um, who particularly stood out for you guys? And is there any other player you kind of want to give a special shout out to? Because I thought the midfield functioned really well today as well. I thought the defence started really stepping up as well. And I thought the fullbacks in particular um, had very, very creative, good games, industrial games. But, guys, who is your man of the match? Lisa, I am going to come to you first. Okay, um, I think, 
I don't know. I guess, Is yeah, I mean, I guess Elliot. Allison would be my man of the match, <laughs> but I do think Robertson deserves a shout out as well because he had the two assists. Um, and, and as you said, I think he played, he played really well. It's, we're back to seeing kind of the expected Andy Robertson playing, um, you know, with the crosses and the corners and in the defensive work and, you know, and all the things. So, um, while I think overall I have to give it to, to Allison, I, I, Robertson is a second for me. And that's not I love that. I love you wanted me to say Harvey Elliott, didn't you? See, I can't be biased all the time. No, she can't. But I love that. I love the fact that she's gone really, really obscure and quirky and, you know, she's thought out the box. Because my basic self, I'm just going to give it to Darby Nunez. Mm-hmm. Just going to put it out there. I, I, my man of the match is Darby Nunez today because I felt like not only was it the two goals, it was the fact that he was chasing down the ball. He was making a nightmare of a life for the goalkeeper when he was trying to press him. I felt like he was doing everything that you kind of wanted him from the attacker. And, you know, when he's pressing the goalkeeper as well, he gave me old school Roberto Firmino vibes. And yes, for me, I just love the overall play of Darwin Nunes. And plus he got two goals and very basic. Kay, what about you? Well, um, so, so I was I was also going to give mine to Ali because I thought no one else would have done that. But Lisa Marie has put me to the post, which I, I very much welcome. I spend a lot of time on Rate Don't Hate when I used to do it, just watching Alison make amazing saves. But it was like one save a game. And you, you can't really give him man of the match for that. So yeah. um, I, I very much feel like when, when there's ever a chance to give Alison Becker man of the match, we should jump on it because... <laughs> Because it's just at always such a high level and he helps us out so much through the entirety of the season, never getting enough credit. But um, yeah, given that uh, that Lisa Marie has so wonderfully done uh, done that job for me, I think I would, I would also give it to, to Darwin. I, I, I just feel that he's growing into a space where he's starting to understand that defenses don't really know what to do with him. And one of the things today I saw, you know, from that left wing, smashing it across the box, so that Mo Salah, um, you know, got that big opportunity and, you know, took a really good save from the keeper. That is not something strikers just have in their box. And he's, he's causing so many problems across so many different dimensions for opposition defenses that it's, it's really becoming scary. It's becoming scary for everybody else that, you know, that he's growing into the game and that he's, he's doing things in the manner that he is. So I would also give it names. I'd also give it to Nunes. Nice. I like the shouts, though. I love the fact that Alison Becker got a shout there. I love Robbo got a shout. We've gone with Darwin Nunes. Guys, if you're listening, let us know your man of the match. We'd love to hear your thoughts. We have come to the end of this podcast. I really enjoy talking about the Reds. I'm going to miss not talking about the Reds, but I'm sure I'll figure something out um, uh, to fill the void. Um, And a a massive shout out to these two awesome, awesome guests who came on, Lisa and Kay. But before I let them go, I'm going to get some plugs. Lisa, I'm going to come to you. Um, Where can people find you on social media and where can people find more of your work? And is there anything you'd like to plug? Twitter and Instagram at LMarieMH. Um, And you can find me with... Trev Downey and Guy Drinkle and, and whoever else. Cam joined us yesterday on the main AI pod. Um, and if you think my voice sounds bad today, listen to the episode that we recorded yesterday and went up last night because I sound fantastic. Fantastic. Um, so, yeah, so that's generally where I can be found. And we're, we're planning to, you know, keep up the weekly main um, AI pod, you know, throughout the World Cup, we've got all kinds of nonsense planned. And um, I just hope that hope this that. is a good pause for us and we come back after the break even stronger. I love it. Do give Lisa Maria a follow on social media and do check out the main AI podcast. I am going to be listening to that tomorrow. I cannot wait. Um, I'm glad she made a bit of a recovery for us on this podcast and her insight was just absolutely phenomenal on this pod. So once again, thanks, Lisa. Kay, um, uh, where can people find you on social media? And is there anything you would like to plug? You can find me on Twitter if you are so 
uh, if you are so influenced. Um, but what's my t- my Twitter handle is the kiln. So it's T H E underscore K Y L N. I think I think that's it. Um, so you can find me there. And as for plugs, um, I'm always a big fan of the Minefield uh, podcast with uh, with Andrew Vincent and Alan. I, I just love the psychological aspects of uh, of the game and how how it plays out. It's it's kind of weird to think that the heroes that we have that we watch, you know, since kids are not just people, but also deal with the same kind of issues that we have in our jobs. And that podcast mm-hmm. just helps you contextualize it. So yeah, uh, they do have one out now. I think it is doing the circuit the, the rounds at the moment. And uh, yeah, go ahead and listen to it. Absolutely do. And yep, footballers, they are human. Just because they get paid a ridiculous amount does not mean they ha- don't have emotions and feelings. And, you know, I think you're absolutely spot on there. And the Minefield podcast is excellent. And I think there's a fair few coming during the World Cup as well, listeners. So stay tuned for that one. And I can confirm, K got his Twitter handle right. Good to know that you know your own Twitter. <laughs> uh, you know, give me a big thumbs up here on my end. Guys, um, uh, nice. so do do give Kate a follow. Do listen to the Minefield podcast and all the podcasts on Anfield Index because they are, in my opinion, really, really insightful and something for everyone, very different. For my part, um, I will probably be really busy on Instagram doing little videos, talking about random things about football. I'll be busy on there. You can follow me at the Nina Kowser Show. And, um, yeah, my Twitter handle is at, at Nina Kowser. So, yeah, um, uh, once again, guys, thank you so much for listening. Hope you enjoyed the podcast and we will be back soon. Till next time, take care and up the reds. We hope you enjoyed listening to this Anfield Index show. Please be sure to subscribe to our channel so future podcasts find their way to your device automatically. There's nothing quite like fan engagement, and we'd love to know what you think of anything discussed on this show. The best way to get in touch is over on our free Discord community, where both podcasters and listeners debate the hottest LFC topics 24-7. Sign up free now at anfieldindex.com forward slash discord. You won't regret it. You can also follow us on Twitter at Anfield Index and find us on Facebook by searching for Anfield Index. Oh, and before you go, we'd love it if you could leave us a five-star review on your favourite podcast app. It only takes a couple of seconds and it means the world to the people who create these free shows.